welcome to my channel. What I'm going to do today is go through the basics of Aperture so you have all the information you need to start taking better pictures instantly. When I first started photography I found it so difficult reading books and following online tutorials about Aperture, not often understanding all the different terminology. So what I want to do today is go through three simple steps with you so you can start taking pictures straight away. The first one I'm going to go through is the terminology, so understanding a little bit about what each term means and showing you examples of this as we go. Then I'm going to show you on the camera how to change the setting so you can manipulate it to do what you want and then we're going to put it all together and I'll show you what to do in practice. So the first thing that we need to be aware of is exposure. So exposure is the amount of light that enters the camera and then reaches the sensor. If your photograph is really, really bright, this is classed as overexposure, so too much light has entered the camera. If not enough light enters the camera, then this would be classed as underexposed, so your picture is likely to look really dark. So what you need to do is control the amount of light entering the camera. One thing you do need to be aware of is the exposure triangle. So what we're focusing on today is aperture, but there's two other elements to this triangle, and that's shutter speed and ISO. I will be doing other videos on these, so please look out for those as well. But what you need to know for now is that all these three things work together. Let me explain what aperture actually is. Simply put, it's the opening of the lens through which light can enter the camera. Although this is now done using dials or buttons on the camera, it is in fact a function of the lens. You can change the size of this opening, so if you widen it, more light enters the camera, and if you narrow it, less light will enter. It's also worth noting that each lens does have a limit on how wide or small this opening can get. First let me explain that the scale to measure aperture is known as the f-stop scale. The f-stops are also known as f-numbers and it is a way of describing how open or closed the aperture is. Unlike ISO or shutter speed settings, the numbers can appear a bit confusing but they do actually represent the lens's focal length divided by the effective diameter of the opening as seen at the sensor. Because of this there are more f number variations, but here you can see some typical examples. You will notice that the higher the f number, the smaller the opening. Look at f22 over on the right and now compare this with the lower f stop numbers such as f2 on the left, which is a much larger opening. It's also worth knowing that each full f stop change represents either a halving or doubling of light absorbed by the camera sensor. So if you went from f11 to f8, you're doubling the amount of light. This is known as opening up the lens. If you reverse this and went from f8 to f11, you'd be halving the light. This is known as closing down the lens. I know, I used to find this really tricky when I started out. So one easy way of remembering it is L, L, L. Large equating to the number, less light. So large number, less light. So if you've got an F number of 22, you're going to have less light, which means your aperture is going to be a lot smaller. If you've got more light, you're going to have a smaller F number, which means your aperture is going to be much wider. You can find this information on the lens. Here on the left, the maximum aperture is shown as f1.8, and on the lens on the right, it's f4.5. The maximum aperture also indicates the speed of the lens. Lenses with 1.4 or 2.8, for example, are classed as fast lenses, which is a term you might have heard before. Now we understand the primary function of aperture is to control exposure and what that means, I'd now like to introduce you to another function of aperture. Another term you'll need to know is depth of field, and this can be large or narrow. By varying the size of the aperture, you can choose how much of the image will appear sharp. Any object you focus on will be the sharpest thing in the picture, but sharpness doesn't all of a sudden disappear. Any points closer or further away than the point focused on will be less sharp. Look at this example. Here I have manually focused on the strawberry at the front. I've set the aperture to f11 and it's brought all the foreground and background objects into focus. This is a really good example of what's called a large depth of field. It's really suited to landscape photography. When we open up the lens to f5.6, you can now see that the strawberry at the back of the photo isn't as sharp as the one that I focused on at the front but you can still make out some detail. However, taking this even further, I opened up the lens to a really wide aperture of f1.8. 
You can now see how much this has isolated the front strawberry and made everything else really blurry. This is classed as either a narrow or shallow depth of field. This is a really great creative control that you can use to help focus the attention on a specific element of a scene. And it also works really well when taking portraits because it gets rid of any distracting backgrounds. Other things that affect the depth of field is the distance that the subject is away from you as well as the focal length of the lens. So now we know how aperture works, how do we control it? If your priority is to have control over the background, then I recommend shooting in aperture priority mode. So get off auto or scene mode and turn your mode dial here to AV. It may just say A depending on your camera. Your dial may also be situated in a different place. It may have a mode dial lock release button also, so you have to press that down to turn it. Or it may be under your camera's main menu settings. A change in aperture usually requires a change in either ISO or shutter speed to compensate. However in this mode the camera will choose and apply the best settings for your shutter speed. Feel free to set your ISO to auto for now to make it easier while you're getting used to the aperture priority mode. Now to actually change the aperture. The easiest way of doing this is using the main dial on the top of your camera. Just turn this along to the desired F number. It can also be changed on the live view screen if you have one. On this lens I can increase the aperture from f22 to f1.8 or close it as needed. You will see the numbers change on the top of the LCD screen through the viewfinder or on the screen itself. Don't worry if when you're making the changes the image still looks the same through your viewfinder or on the screen. Once you've pressed the shutter and you view the image you will notice the effect. If you have a depth of field preview button on your camera you can also use that but for now just snap away and it will soon become second nature. Now that's all you need to know to get started, so what I recommend you do is attach your camera to a tripod, on a beanbag or just keep it pretty steady and go out and practice with different settings. Focus on something a couple of metres away from you and play around with your settings and you'll see how much control you've got over the background being blurry. What I also recommend you doing as well is changing the distance at which you're away from your subject. So walk in a few steps or further back and zoom in on your lens if you're able to. This will also change how much blur you will get. Get comfortable using this setting, keep practicing and then check out my next video on shutter speed which will give you even more creative control. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!